My name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about multimodal pre training with Microsoft's Beat 3 model. So let's get started. What is Microsoft's Beat 3 model? Well, it's a general purpose 1.9 billion multimodal foundation model. So, uh, you know, it's a multimodal model and it has about 2 billion parameters. That's the way to think about it. Uh, it has a backbone architecture which has been created using a modification of something called as multi-way transformers that enables both multimodal uh, both modality specific encoding for text and for text and images well multimodal here means text and images and it also enables cross modality fusion i'll talk about it in the next slide right in more detail but uh, the takeaway is that yes it uses something called as multi-way transformers for good modality specific encoding as well as cross modality uh, fusion of of information okay. the second interesting thing about this model is that it is pre-trained using the simple mass language modeling laws so uh, mass language modeling objective function uh, they do mass language modeling on both images as well as text so in fact they call it like english right so in the sense that uh, you know well uh, mass language modeling on images so you can actually mask out some blocks of images or uh, tokens in text or essentially both right so that's that uh, and the most important thing about this model is that this model actually shows uh, very good accuracy values state of the art um, you know across several vision tasks and vision language tasks so these vision tasks include object detection semantic segmentation image classification while vision language tasks include visual reasoning visual and question answering image captioning and cross modal retrieval this paper was published at uh, CVPR 2023. So you see this chart actually says it all. If you, uh, you know, uh, this chart sort of compares the B3 model with the uh, previous uh, previous uh, popular models across so many different tasks, right? Each of these axes is a different uh, uh, vision task or a vision language task. And you observe uh, that B3 model is better than the Coca, or Flamingo or Florence models, uh, which are previously proposed multimodal models across all of these tasks. In fact, it is better than the previous state of the art across all of them. Right? So you see, this is basically uh, the B3 model, the outermost one. Uh, the uh, This one is essentially um, the previous state of the art. It could be any of the uh, previously popular models for uh, for these various uh, uh, tasks. And then, as you notice, Florence is good for some tasks. You know, so so Florence, the screen thing is good for some tasks. Um, and then, you know, other other models like Coca and Flamingo are also good for some tasks, but then they are not so great for other tasks at all. They are probably not even applicable to some of those other tasks. Right. So, um, of course, this this uh, this chart sort of shows, uh, um, uh, I mean, you know, um, uh, the, the performance for both vision and vision language tasks um, using various metrics. So each axis plots a metric which is specific um, to their to that task, for example, um, for object detection, average precision is used. For visual question answering, visual question answering accuracy is used. For image capturing, CIDR is used, and so on. Okay. Um, so here the I to T is image to text retrieval task, and uh, find T to I is text to image retrieval task. And um, in both of these retrieval scenarios, uh, it is it is recall at one. So retrieval at one is basically what is plotted here. Okay. So that is that. Um, now let's get into details and understand how this model has been pretend. Right? So, uh, so you know, in other words, the question is how is multi-way transformer architecture? How does that look like? And how is it is basically how is it basically used for B3 pre-training? Okay. So this uh, slide is pretty busy, but let's uh, look at it part by part. Okay. So a B3 uh, architecture essentially uh, is a multi-way transformer architecture. So multi-way transformer, uh, so it has several such multi-way transformer layers. In fact, 40 such layers, right? And each of those layers actually contains two sub layers, right? So essentially it's like the standard transformer. It basically contains multi-head self-attention layer, uh, of course, with residual connections and some and norm and so on, right? But it also contains uh, this uh, feed forward uh, sub layer, which is more like a uh, uh, mixture of experts based, uh, based representation, right? So essentially, in fact, uh, uh, every sublayer essentially contains three different experts. One is a vision expert, the other is a language expert, and the third is a visual linguistic expert. Okay. Um, now, uh, if you look at uh, uh, the parameters, the overall model actually contains 40 layers, and in those 40 layers, there are about 1.9 billion parameters, which are more or less, uh, you know, uh, so so there are like 317 shared parameters here. You know, uh, these kinds of layers have 317 parameters, but then the experts are pretty large. 
uh, the visual linguistic expert is not that large. It's just 52 million, but then the language and the vision expert, both of them are 692 million uh, million themselves. Right. So that's that. So that's basically the architecture. The architecture is pretty simple in that sense. It's, it's a mixture of experts where the mixture basically contains three experts uh, for the feed forward sublayer. And then of course the multi-head self-attention self sublayer is sort of shared. Okay, And there are 40 such layers. Right. Um, now, um, uh, now the pre-training data actually consists of uh, these three different sources. It is pre-trained on image text pair data, on image data, and uh, as well as on text data. The pre-training is done using mass language modeling in that sense, and I'll talk more details about that. But then the idea is that uh, image text data basically contains uh, variants of uh, conceptual captions and uh, other kinds of captions like SBU and COCO um, and, and so on. So it also contains image uh, ImageNet data, um, ImageNet 21K categories data, it also is pre-trained on the text data, English Wikipedia, books, corpus, open web text, and stories, CC news, and so on. Okay. Um, well, um, uh, total um, number of peers, uh, total number of you know documents, uh, and the size of this, this collection is as follows: image text pair data is basically 21 million pairs. Uh, image data is 14 million images from ImageNet, uh, and then there are this text corpus of 160 GB. So it's uh, rigorously pre-trained. Okay. Uh, the tokenizer, well, you need both image and text tokenizers. So text tokenizer is sentence piece tokenizer, image tokenizer. They just use the same B, uh, image tokenizer as B3.2. Okay. Um, the masking, well, uh, for so, so masking basically is done for text data uh, in, in a particular way, image data and uh, text plus image combination in a different way. So for text data, they use the standard masking. They mask 15% randomly chosen tokens. For, uh, for uh, image data, they basically mask out 40% of the image patches. Uh, which are which are sort of blocks uh, uh, randomly selected blocks from the image. For uh, image text paired data, uh, they uh, they mask out fifty percent tokens of text from the image text paired data. Okay, so that's our pre-training. Now, when you want to use this model for various tasks, as you observed, right, this model is really good for so many tasks, so many interesting uh, set of tasks. So when you use this model for various kinds of tasks, uh, you can use them in five different ways. And those ways are basically what are shown here, uh, you know, on on the right bottom side. So you can use it for uh, for vision encoding. So essentially, if these are pure vision related tasks, you can actually use them for vision encoding. For example, image classification or object detection, semantic segmentation. You can actually use them for vision encoding, where only the uh, vision expert fires. Right? Uh, so you can fine tune them on any vision related data, and that basically uh, works as a as a vision encoder. You can also use them for language encoding, where you basically fine tune only the language expert. You can use them for multimodal tasks in three ways: so fusion encoding, fusion encoder, dual encoder, or image text generator. Now, for uh, so of course the last one is generator, but the other two are encoders. Fusion encoder essentially uh, takes both image and text, and then it has multi-head self-attention and uh, uh, several uh, vision layers and several language experts. And then towards the end, uh, you know, typically in their paper, they have used three last three layers out of their 40 are essentially visual linguistic uh, tuned. So that is basically how fusion encoder works. Now, you could also use it as a dual encoder. So you could basically just uh, take uh, uh, the images and pass them to uh, a copy, which basically um, uh, uh, which basically fine tunes the vision uh, expert, and then another copy which fine tunes the text ex uh, language expert. Basically, takes takes the language part, right? And then at the end of it, when you take get the representations, you take the cosine similarity between them and train them using contrastive loss. This is basically a dual encoder, which is more like a contrastive encoder, uh, 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 basically trained on contrastive loss, right? Lastly, you can use it for image to text generation. So essentially, you can pass an image and text with the mask, and then you try to predict uh, the mask uh, uh, mask text. Um, uh, and then here, the architecture is more or less the same as this architecture. It's just that the loss function may be different. Right. So essentially, uh, you have a vision encoder and you have a um, you know language encoder up to L minus F layers, and for the remaining last few layers, you have a visual linguistic uh, feed forward uh, feed forward uh, um, a sub layer uh, as the expert to be fine tuned. OK, so let's talk about more in a more detailed manner how B3 can be fine tuned for various vision linguistic tasks. These are multimodal tasks, or you can also call them as visual linguistic tasks or vision language tasks. Okay. 
So in all cases, the backbone network is, of course, the Beat 3 architecture. Uh, all layers essentially contain both vision and language experts, the top three layers. So, you know, out of the 40, the top three layers actually have vision language experts, okay, visual linguistic expert, let's call it that way. Yeah, uh, only the uh, vision related parameters are activated when the model is being used as a vision encoder. Uh, so that's that. Okay. Now, uh, all these tasks, which VQA, visual reasoning, image captioning, image text retrieval are multimodal tasks. They take images and text as input. Okay. So vision, uh, visual question answering basically is you have an image, you have a question which is in text form and you have to come up with an answer in text form. Okay? So you can actually fine tune. Uh, so for VQF, you can fine tune the model as a as a fusion encoder. So remember this fusion encoder, uh, this variety. So this is how you fine tune the model um, and uh, uh, where the input is essentially the image and the question uh, concatenated uh, um, in form of embeddings, and then you take the final pooled output and then you feed it to a classifier layer so as to predict uh, what is the right answer. So rather than generating an answer, you are actually predicting uh, the, the right answer. Okay, so that's uh, uh, predicting the class label of the right answer. Okay. Visual reasoning. Visual reasoning is a task where you basically have two images as input, uh, a pair of images as input, and then uh, you have to uh, you have to determine whether a textual description is true about that pair of images or not. Uh, so here uh, you split the two uh, images, uh, you split this triple instance into two instances. You construct two uh, text image pairs based on this triplet input, and then you fine tune it as a fusion encoder like you did uh, for VQA um, to jointly encode the image text pairs. You essentially uh, final, you take the final pooled outputs uh, and then concatenate them and then feed it to a classifier so as to do binary classification, whether the text description is about the pair of images or not. Okay. Image captioning, well, uh, uh, here you actually use it uh, in, in this format. So it is image to text generation, right? Captioning. So uh, yeah, it's a conditional generation model, uh, uh, um, you know, which is basically fine tuned using masked fine tuning. So what does that mean? That me basically means that not just do you do masking at pre trained time, but when you want to fine tune for image captioning, you do masking even then. Uh, but then here masking is rather limited. So you take your image tokens, you don't mask them, but you take your text tokens and some of the text tokens, you mask them. Okay, That's one thing. The other thing is that it is also trained in autoregressive manner uh, uh, for the text part, which basically means that image tokens can attend to each other bidirectionality, bidirectionally uh, within the image sequence. So image tokens, there is no autoregressiveness, but for text tokens, there is autoregression. Right? So image tokens can attend to each other bidirectionally within the image sequence, but uh, tokens of the caption can attend to image tokens and their left caption tokens and themselves. Okay, so essentially, therefore, on the text side, essentially, it is autoregressive in nature. Uh, during fine tuning, you do mask some percent of the caption tokens only, uh, uh, and then the idea is that the model must uh, be fine tuned to recover uh, those mass tokens based on all the image tokens or the previous uh, unmasked, um, uh, previous non-masked text tokens. Right? So that is that, uh, and and of course you train it with Gaussian entropy loss because you're trying to recover uh, the mass tokens. The last uh, multimodal task that they experiment with is image text retrieval, and uh, image text retrieval can be thought about in two ways: image to text retrieval or text to image retrieval. They experiment with both kinds of settings. Uh, they also uh, so so here the the way they train is basically using a dual encoder. So the contrastive loss guy, which is also very popular as an architecture for retrieval kind of settings, where you take the image, pass it through the image encoder, and then pass you know or other you you know uh, ensure that your visual FFN is fired. And then you uh, are fine tuned, right? At fine tuned time, so you take your text and pass it to um, the language FFN. Uh, and then at the end of it, you take the embeddings, pooled embeddings. You essentially take the cosine similarity and compute uh, and and essentially try to optimize for the contrastive loss. Okay, so that's that. Now uh, B3 can also be used for vision only tasks. No text is involved. So tasks like object detection and instance segmentation, semantic segmentation, image classification. So for object detection and instance segmentation, B3 is used as the backbone, and then they, they combine it with the VIT detection architecture, which includes a simple feature pyramid and window attention. Now these are, you know, if you don't know them, then it is good to actually look at the VIT detection paper, so as to detection architecture papers, just to understand what these are. Maybe I'll cover them in some other video. Okay, uh, but the interesting part is that here also they've used B3 as the backbone architecture. 
Uh, now they do fine tuning here uh, in two steps. Well, now of course they report accuracy on the Coco uh, image captioning data set, but uh, they do intermediate fine tuning with this objects 365 data set, which other baselines also have shown uh, to improve the overall image captioning results. Semantic segmentation, again, they use B3 as the backbone, uh, but then uh, for segmentation purpose, you have to put something on top of it. So they basically do, uh, uh, if, for that segmentation framework, they use a dense uh, prediction task adapter along with mask to former. Right? So those are, the, um, those are the extra things that you have to add so as to essentially do semantic segmentation. Um, for image class, uh, but, but then you know, the, the idea to notice is that in uh, all of these vision tasks, only the vision encoder part or the vision FFN part of the of the transformer expert layers of the of the multi-way transformer expert layers gets fired. <coughs> image classification. So image classification is a very very popular task, right? So for the image net, so they experiment with the ImageNet 1K data set, 1000 classes data set, um, but then um, they model this. Uh, <clears throat> so classification task is actually a retrieval task. So image to text retrieval task with category names as texts. So rather than trying to predict the, uh, the class index, they actually try to predict the class name. Right? <clears throat> um, it has been trained as a dual encoder to find the most relevant class label uh, given an image. Right? So essentially you use the same dual encoder setting uh, that you were using uh, also for image to, uh, image to text or text to image retrieval. Uh, and uh, then you do the same things, cosine similarity scores to predict the most probable label for each image. Right? Um, uh, again, uh, you know, uh, rather than directly fine tuning on ImageNet 1K data set, they actually do intermediate fine tuning on the ImageK 21000 class data set and uh, then do fine tuning on uh, ImageNet 1K data set. And as we already talked about, uh, across all of these tasks, uh, uh, B3 has been shown to outperform uh, all uh, available state of the art baselines, state of the art baseline methods. Okay, so that's that. Uh, let me quickly summarize. So, uh, B3 is a nice convergence of language, vision, and multimodal pre training. Um, B3 is a general purpose 1.9 billion parameter multimodal foundation model. Uh, you can pre train, uh, it basically consists of pre training a multi way transformer by performing mass data modeling on images, text, and image text pairs. Um, the um, uh, you know, uh, multi way transformer essentially contains, in their case, 40 layers, uh, where all the layers contain vision and uh, uh, and uh, uh, text experts, but then the last three layers contain visual linguistic experts as well. Um, of course, all, all of those layers contain uh, contain the shared multi-head self-attention sublayer as well. Uh, it can be used for uh, as, as vision encoder, uh, text encoder, uh, fusion encoder, dual encoder, uh, or image to text generator. So, uh, and as, as we noticed, it has been shown to be state of the art across several of those vision as well as uh, visual linguistic tasks. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.